Today, I wanted to take a little bit of a closer look at a scene from Tommy Wiseau's masterpiece, *The Room*. It's somewhere in the middle of the film, where the disillusioned banker Johnny, played by Tommy Wiseau, encounters his best friend Mark. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Johnny. What's up? Specifically, I want to look at how Wiseau blocks this four-minute and thirty-four-second scene, and how staging of the characters adds to the story. I have a problem with Lisa. She says that I hit her. <sighs> What? Now I should say there are two ways to look at the scene from the perspective of a first-time viewer who has to take the information that is presented at face value, or from the perspective of someone who has already seen the film and knows the true intentions and outcomes of what is revealed here. Now I'm going to take a look at this from a second perspective, which means that there's going to be spoilers. So just a heads up. So if you've seen the room, you know that in this scene, Mark is spinning an elaborate lie in order to gauge how Johnny would feel about the secret he's keeping from him. I just can't figure women out. Sometimes they're just too smart. Sometimes they're flat out stupid. Other times they're just evil. It seems to me like you're an expert, Mark. Mark slept with Johnny's girlfriend and soon-to-be wife. Mark is conflicted. He wants to warn Johnny that Lisa is not the perfect, loving woman he thinks she is. The scene in question, the one on Johnny's rooftop in San Francisco, comes 38 minutes into the film. The scene starts with Johnny entering from the staircase and Mark sitting at the far end of the rooftop. There happens to be a second chair. In the beginning, Johnny sits so that they're equals in this conversation. Mark's asking a question, but note how he gets up to evade the unexpected counter. You think girls like to cheat like guys do? What makes you say that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking. I don't have to worry about that because Lisa is loyal to me. Yeah, man. You never know. People are very strange these days. A multi-layered conversation ensues, where we, as the audience, know more than the protagonist. Leisurely leaning against the rooftop wall, holding a football almost as if it's meant to keep him grounded. Here, the power shifts again as Johnny stands and moves towards Mark. I'm so happy I have you as my best friend, and I love Lisa so much. Yeah, man. Yeah, you are very lucky. Well, maybe you should have a girl, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I have one already. I don't know yet. Mark moves towards the camera and fills the screen, but the soft focus is an indication of who really is toying with whom. That's too bad. My Lisa is great when I can get it. Returning back to the chair, the audience can't know it, but why those foreshadowing here? A circling of the two friends. Wherever Mark physically moves, Johnny follows, as if he's chasing him. Why those blocking becomes aggressive? No. Definitely not an expert, Johnny. What's bothering you, Mark? And the next thing that happens is perhaps the most interesting moment in the scene. Mark wants nothing more than escape, but Johnny pulls him back, just as the camera dollies backwards to keep them both in frame. Now the camera moves all over the scene, but this moment is the only one that really calls attention to itself. This is a reminder that for Wiseau, blocking involves the position of the camera too. There are three elements in scene, not just two. Is it some secret? No, Tell forget. I'll talk to you later. Well, whatever. Mark does escape, but has no choice but to leave the football, which throughout this film really is a powerful lay motif of friendship on the brink of falling apart. Hey, Johnny. Oh, hi, Danny. What's wrong with Mark? He's cranky today. <laughs> Girl trouble, I guess. Just when we think the scene is over, there's an unexpected turn. Danny, the metaphoric son of Johnny, appears. Wiseau explores another layer to the complicated love relationship with Lisa. Got to tell you about something. Shoot, Danny. It's about Lisa. Go on. She's beautiful. She looks great in a red dress. I think I'm in love with her. Go on. As Wiseau explores the bigger reach of love, this scene is a stroke of genius. On one level, the room is about the power of film and the power of narrative. How a really good narrative can manipulate us, whether it's for the purposes of entertainment or something more meaningful. 
Lisa loves you too, as a person, as a human being, as a friend. You know, people don't have to say it. They can feel it. What do you mean? You can love someone deep inside your heart and there is nothing wrong with it. If a lot of people love each other, the world would be a better place to live. Lisa's your future wife. Then you don't worry about it. The scene is small and often overlooked, but it has Wiseau written all over it. Lisa loves you too, as a friend. I just recently discovered this film and I instantly fell in love with it. If I would have known about it early in college, I would have diagrammed it out in my notebooks, trying to figure out where Wiseau put the camera, what lens he used. And I want to encourage you guys to pick out a favorite scene of yours with compelling blocking and do the same. That's the idea. You're right. I think it can be really illuminating. Thanks for paying my tuition. You're very welcome, Danny. And keep in mind, if you have any problems, talk to me and I will help you. Awesome. Thanks, Johnny. Let's go eat. Uh, come on, let's go. <laughs> Thanks to Tommy's underwear for simply existing. Maybe one day it can sponsor this channel and help me keep my nose to the grindstone just to make more videos, which I love to do. Thanks guys, hopefully I'll see you soon. You are lying, I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa!